not going to teach you how to read music from scratch, okay? And presumably you know how to read at least one clef at the moment. So what we're going to do is show you how to read the, the other clefs that you that you don't know. Thank goodness there's only three clefs, there's no more than that. We have the treble clef, which if you're watching this you probably know the treble clef. If you don't know the treble clef, you probably know the bass clef. And the last clef that you're least likely to know is the C clef, which we, you will know if you're a viola player, because viola players read the alto clef all the time. Now, what people usually start doing is trying to remember all the all the different rhymes for this, like you know, face, all cows eat grass, and stuff like that, to help you remember the lines and spaces. Now, it's all very helpful, but what's most helpful is if you can remember the actual function of the clef. That, to me, was the the most useful thing when I was learning music at the very beginning. I remember it even now that I just didn't get this for ages until I actually understood what the clef actually meant. Now the literal translation of clef is key, which is crazy, right, because we already have keys, we have key signatures. So key signatures are a different kind of key. What you unlock with the key signature is where we are, we're in C major, we're in G major, we're in D major. So that's what we unlock with that. Um, but all those sharps and flats don't mean anything unless we know whereabouts on the pitch ladder we're actually playing. Key signatures don't tell you if you're up here or down here or in the middle. And that's what the clefs do tell you. So the treble clef can also be called a G clef because it tells you where to put G above middle C. The bass clef can also be called an F clef which is where to put F below middle C. And the alto clef, or the tenor clef, can also be called a C clef, because it shows you where to put middle C. So, if you can remember where middle C is, then you're in a great position to understand every clef there is. Let me show what I mean. So, let's start with, how do you find middle C? Now, this is a question that I ask any new student. It doesn't matter whether they've done grade one, no grades, grade 8, diploma, whatever they're doing, I tend to ask them, do you know where middle C is? It's the first question that my first piano teacher asked me, and I said, no, I don't. <laughs> what usually happens is somebody just presses a, you know, a C. Or, even better, and they, they just laugh at you and think, why are you asking such a silly question? The reason I ask it is because people get it wrong. So middle C, if you want to know where it is, what you can do is look at the name of your piano. So some pianos are called Steinway, some pianos are called Yamaha, in this case mine is called Roger. So go and find out what your piano is called and then come back. So once you've found out the name of your piano, what you're going to do is look for the two black notes nearest to the text. So there's the text. And then look for the two black notes. Go to the left, to the white note next to it. So remember left, that's going to be middle C. Now just a quick note about treble clefs. When you see treble clefs these days, they've kind of lost their ancient function of showing you where G is. People tend to, to do them like this. So the line it kind of curves round F. Um, it kind of starts on F. Like if I draw one, if I draw one on the page, they tend to start kind of there and go round and up, etc. It doesn't really show you where G is. So what I, I encourage people to do is, when you draw a treble clef, start on the G like this, do a nice little circle. This is really hard doing this from the back of the camera, but bear with me. So draw a little, let's start another one of those. Let's draw around there. Go around, up and down. There we go, that's a nice one. I actually see what I'm doing. Um, so there we can see that the, the second line is G. Now make sure you know where middle C is. Middle C 
is at the bottom of the treble clef. So if I draw a treble clef here, you can see it is going to be down here. There we go. If I draw a bass clef, like that, middle C is at the top of the bass clef. There we go. These two notes are exactly the same. Those are both middle C's. Um, if I draw a C clef, like this, then what this clef does is it shows you where middle C is. And in this case, middle C is going to be there. So back to the piano. Uh, middle C is here. That's what the C clef shows you. The triple clef or the G clef shows you where the G is above middle C. So this will be the, the second line. The F clef shows you where F is below middle C, which is going to be down here. So for a little bit of fun, let's challenge ourselves and draw a few notes. So I'm going to draw myself a treble clef. Here we go. And I'm going to find a G. So this that's really easy because G clef shows you where G is. There we go. So this is G above middle C. So let's draw that same note in a alto clef. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -bum. There's middle C. And I'm going to draw a G above middle C, which is the same one I've got here. So there's my middle C. If I count up to G, C, D, E, F, G. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. There we go. Let's draw the same thing in bass clef. Middle C is here, so I need to go above middle C. So middle C, D, E, F, G. And there's G above middle C. Let's now pick a note in the bass clef. How about um, G below middle C? So this shows me where F is below middle C. So all I need to do is go up one. See there? There we go. Now let's draw that in C clef, or alto clef. <clears throat> There's our middle C. So let's go down C, B, A, G. Now let's do the same thing in treble clef. So we get a G below middle C. There's our middle C. C, B, A, G. So if I were to draw all the clefs on top of each other, here's our G clef. That shows you where middle C is. Here's our bass clef. Shows me where F below middle C is. And here's our C clef. It hangs out in the middle. Shows me where middle C is. So the last thing to remember is that the C clef, as I said earlier, can be moved around. Um, don't get confused by this. Just If you remember where middle C is, you can't go wrong. So when it's right in the middle like that it's called the alto clef if i move it up one so if i move it there oh i've done this one around anyway so this is going to be called the tenor clef so all that's happened is i've moved middle c up here now in ye olden days you used to be able to do this with any clef you could move the g clef say up here and then G above middle C would be on the middle line. Or you could put it up here. Or, you know, put a bass clef down here, that kind of thing. Um, or up here, wherever you want it really, it doesn't really matter. So these clefs, they do have this other function that you can move them around and get these different effects. I think that um, Bach, when he wrote the um, his very first C major prelude, he wrote it with a C clef down here because he wanted um, trying to do that with one hand
around. <laughs> um, so he wanted his C to be at the bottom of the stave, uh, which is really cool. So um, as well as uh, remembering what the clefs actually mean, you can also use various rhymes. Um, I don't tend to teach too many of these for piano playing. I only teach two rhymes. I teach um, face for the right hand, this thing, and for the left hand I teach all cows eat grass. Uh, the reason I don't teach all four rhymes, because you can do rhymes for spaces and you can do rhymes for line, lines as well. The reason I don't teach all four of them is because people just get them all mixed up. They start using the right hand rhyme for the left hand, the left hand rhyme for the right hand, and before long they've tied themselves in a knot, just like this, and everything gets mixed up. So I only teach two rhymes. If you use rhymes, don't use too many of them, because just use the ones that you really need, is what I'm going to say, because you tend to get everything mixed up. Um, for the alto clef, you could just use the lines rhyme of the bass clef. You could go, good boys deserve fudge, for instance, is a great way to remember the spaces of the alto clef. Um, so my recommendation is to concentrate on rhymes for the spaces only, if you're going to use rhymes. Um, for the lines of the bass clef, the, the rhyme most people use is, good boys deserve favour always, or you can use fudge. Good boys deserve fudge always. And then for the um, treble clef lines, you can go, every good boy deserves fudge. As I said, I only teach these spaces and I recommend you do too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any tips or tricks of your own about how you read your clefs, feel free to put them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe over here. And don't forget to check out some of my other cool videos. Let's see, we'll put one up here and one up here and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video goodbye